because if all the energy is released in one go then it will not be possible for the cell to trap this entire energy to store it in the form of ATP and other organisms which also do fermentation okay so this is also one point which is worth noting please keep this in mind we will discuss aerobic respiration versus anaerobic respiration carbon dioxide was released in aerobic respiration remember co2 plus h2o plus energy remember that okay so it cannot be aerobic respiration first two options are anyways anyways hello everyone my name is shivash gaur and welcome to atp step in this video we are going to discuss aerobic respiration versus anaerobic respiration so before we go on to discuss aerobic respiration versus anaerobic respiration we need to understand some basic concepts of respiration so let's see what we are going to discuss in this video so first of all we will see what is respiration then we will discuss the chemical equation of respiration then we will also discuss that how much energy is released in aerobic respiration after that we will discuss what are the steps in aerobic respiration then we will discuss what is anaerobic respiration and after that we will discuss finally the aerobic respiration versus anaerobic respiration and finally we will also do some previous year neat questions on the given topic so without wasting much time let's talk about that what is respiration now respiration is a process in which we extract the energy from the food that we eat when we eat food we get components like carbohydrates like fats proteins etc now among all these different components of the food we use mostly the carbohydrates like glucose to extract the energy from it although if required then fats and proteins can also be used for extracting the energy but carbohydrates are the preferred source why is that we will discuss that in our future videos so if we see that what is respiration then we can say that it is breakdown of some macro molecules like carbohydrates fats and proteins like i told you and carbohydrates like glucose is the preferred source of respiration or substrate for respiration okay now let's look at what is the chemical equation of aerobic respiration because glucose as we know is a six carbon compound right it is c6h12o6 now in the presence of oxygen when we are talking about aerobic respiration we are of course talking about the presence of oxygen there right so what happens in aerobic respiration let's see so here we can say that the complete combustion of glucose that is when glucose is completely oxidized in the presence of oxygen right then we get carbon dioxide we get water and we also get energy right so let's see what is the chemical equation here we can say that it is c6h12o6 plus oxygen and we get carbon dioxide water and energy now this energy most of it is released in the form of heat but we trap this energy which is released and we store this energy in the form of chemical bonds in a molecule called as atp adenosine triphosphate atp okay now see here how are these atp produced are they produced like in one go like in one step like glucose comes oxygen comes combustion boom energy is released and all that energy is extracted to form the atp is that the case no right the energy is released in small small steps right and we need to understand each of these steps which takes place in the different part of the cells right because if all the energy is released in one go then it will not be possible for the cell to trap this entire energy to store it in the form of at therefore this is done in small small steps so that maximum energy can be stored in the form of atp so one thing is clear that the aerobic respiration takes place in multiple step it's a multi step process it's not a single step process okay so see here 
The energy released in aerobic respiration is done in small steps. The first step being glycolysis. Glycolysis. Glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm and oxygen is not required for this process to take place. Now one thing is very clear that if for glycolysis oxygen is not required, right? Then glycolysis can take place in anaerobic respiration as well. Yes or no? Because in anaerobic respiration, oxygen is not there. Like oxygen is not present. So does glycolysis require oxygen? No. Right? So glycolysis is that process which is common to aerobic as well as anaerobic respiration because it does not require oxygen to take place. Right? It takes place in the cytoplasm and where one molecule of glucose is broken down into two molecules of pyruvic acid and we also have net gain of 2 ATP in this process. That is, we get two molecules of ATP here. How exactly? That I will discuss in my glycolysis video. So therefore, I would also like to say that please subscribe this channel and keep tuned to the channel because my next video will be on glycolysis where I will teach all in the entire process uh, that how it takes place. Okay. Now see here, here we get glucose and glucose breaks down into two molecules of a three carbon compound that is pyruvic acid and we get two molecules of ATP. This process glycolysis is common to both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. After this, after this oxidative decarboxylation, sometimes also called as link reaction, Krebs cycle and electron transport system. All these processes are going to take place in the different parts of mitochondria. Right? And here, for this process to take place, oxygen is required. Which means, if oxygen is not there, then these processes, specifically electron transport system, cannot take place. And you know, majority of the ATP production in aerobic respiration takes place in electron transport system. And if that cannot take place, we will not get the ATPs. Right? Why it cannot take place? Because oxygen is absent. Right? So therefore, in anaerobic respiration, none of this is going to take place. Right? That I will also discuss in quite a detailed manner in my fermentation video. Okay? That what happens to the pyruvic acid after the glycolysis and when oxygen is absent. So there we will discuss, but for now you need to understand that these processes take place only and only in aerobic respiration. Why? Because it requires oxygen. See? All these steps takes place in mitochondria and oxygen re is required. And what do oxygen do? The question is, sir, why is oxygen required? See, oxygen acts as an electron acceptor. So the electron moving through the electron transport system is ultimately taken up by oxygen. So if oxygen is absent, ETS, that is electron transport system, cannot take place and therefore we will not get the ATPs of the ETS. Okay, so see here, here what happens is in aerobic respiration after the pyruvic acid is formed, pyruvic acid goes into oxidative decarboxylation, Krebs cycle and ETS and ultimately this pyruvic acid is converted into carbon dioxide, water and 36 AT. Okay, so you can see here, majority of the ATP production is taking place here in the oxidative decarboxylation and the other processes which are taking place in mitochondria. Correct? Okay, so now see here, so total ATP production of aerobic respiration will be how much? Tell me, we got 2 ATP in the glycolysis, we got 36 ATP in the processes taking place in mitochondria, total we get 38 ATP. But the question is, sir, do we get the same number of ATPs in anaerobic respiration? Let's see. In anaerobic respiration, what happens is incomplete breakdown of glucose takes place. Right? Why? Because oxygen is absent and pyruvic acid cannot undergo the processes which I taught you, which takes place in mitochondria. So those processes like again I am repeating that Krebs cycle, oxidative decarboxylation and ETS will not take place. So 
only pyruvic acid will be formed and then pyruvic acid gets reduced to either ethanol or lactic acid depending on where this pyruvic acid is being reduced as in it is is it in the muscle cells or is it in some microbe that i will discuss but see here what happens is that in anaerobic respiration we get glucose molecule being broken down into two molecules of pyruvic acid we get two atp like we get in the glycolysis so glycolysis will take place take place so glycolysis will take place because glycolysis is a common pathway i just told you that okay so glycolysis will take place in the cytoplasm we will get the pyruvic acid and two atp but will this pyruvic acid undergo oxidative decarboxylation krebs cycle and ets the answer is no then the question is then what happens to this pyruvic acid let's see here this pyruvic acid can either get converted into ethanol and carbon dioxide like example of a microorganism in which this process can take place is yeast there are other as well but yeast is a very prominent example here which is responsible for fermentation of pyruvic acid right or glucose and we get ethanol there the enzyme which is responsible for this particular process is pyruvic acid decarboxylase and alcohol dehydrogenase please remember the name of these enzymes next is next possibility is that it can form lactic acid now lactic acid can be formed under anaerobic conditions in bacteria or muscles right for the enzyme responsible for this is lactate dehydrogenase but one thing which is worth noting here is that in both of these processes in both of these processes you can see we are not getting any at right in first one we are getting ethanol plus carbon dioxide right which can happen in yeast and in the next one we are getting lactic acid right in bacteria and muscles again we are not getting any atp right so which means that no further atp production takes place in anaerobic respiration okay the atp produced in anaerobic respiration is the only one which is produced during glyco lysis so you have to keep that in mind one more thing when lactic acid is produced here right only lactic acid is produced carbon dioxide is also not produced okay carbon dioxide is produced only when ethanol is produced during fermentation in yeast and other organisms which also do fermentation okay so this is also one point which is worth noting please keep this in mind now finally we will discuss aerobic respiration versus anaerobic respiration so what have we learned till now let's quickly summarize it the first thing that we can say about aerobic respiration is that it is complete oxidation of glucose right whereas in anaerobic respiration it is incomplete oxidation of glucose second point that we can say is it takes place in mitochondria and cytoplasm both which means cytoplasm is also involved when glycolysis takes place and mitochondria for the other processes right therefore in aerobic respiration mitochondria and cytoplasm both parts of the cell are involved whereas in anaerobic respiration it only takes place in cytoplasm right it only takes place in cytoplasm because only glycolysis takes place and the pyruvic acid which is formed it gets reduced to lactic acid or ethanol clear okay next point is that here which i already told you total 38 atp are produced okay 36 and plus 2 of glycolysis whereas here we get only 2 atp only 2 atp are produced right which are produced during glycolysis right so we get only 2 atp during anaerobic respiration right so one thing is very clear here that out of aerobic and anaerobic respiration which one is able to extract the energy more efficiently from glucose molecule it is aerobic respiration because from the same one molecule of glucose in aerobic respiration we are getting 38 atps whereas in anaerobic respiration we are getting only 2 atps okay now there's time to do some previous year neat questions on the given topic what i will do is i am showing you the question i am reading the question 
then you can pause the video you can give your answer in the comment box i will also personally read all your comments and see who gave the correct answers right and then you can see the correct answer which i will discuss here so let's see the question is that energy releasing metabolic process in which substrate is oxidized without an external electron acceptor so substrate is getting oxidized but electron acceptor is not there what is that process called come on give the answer we have the options glycolysis fermentation aerobic respiration photorespiration we just discussed that fermentation that is anaerobic respiration is where electron acceptor is not present only glycolysis takes place right so the correct answer here would be fermentation right now do the next question everyone see what is the question here in which one of the following processes carbon dioxide is not released this is very obvious we just discussed this come on guys answer in the comment section right and see if you got the correct answer so the correct answer here would be let's see the options first aerobic respiration in plants aerobic respiration in animals alcoholic fermentation lactate fermentation right one thing is clear that uh, carbon dioxide was released in aerobic respiration remember co2 plus h2o plus energy remember that okay so it cannot be aerobic respiration first two options are anyways eliminated now we are left with alcoholic fermentation and lactate fermentation right let me take you quickly back to what i just discussed with you guys right remember this point where i was telling you in anaerobic respiration pyruvic acid forms what ethanol plus carbon dioxide right whereas when pyruvic acid gets reduced to lactic acid here we just get lactic acid we do not get carbon dioxide or energy so the answer is very obvious isn't it right the correct answer would be option d right here the correct answer was b lactate fermentation d is the correct answer right because there we don't get any carbon dioxide okay now what does this lactic acid do when it gets accumulated in our muscles and everything that i will discuss in my fermentation video my next video would be on glycolysis where i will discuss glycolysis like never before right so we will do that in our next video but till then please subscribe this channel right press the bell icon as well so that you get the notifications whenever atp uploads a video right till then take care bye bye thank you